So welcome to Hootie Doodle, everybody. Today we've got a challenge. In the previous episode, we worked on mocking up a fuel tank out of paper. And this episode, we're gonna try and we're gonna start, it's gonna be part one of maybe a three-part video series or something of making a fuel tank from scratch. And what we're doing today is cutting out a lot of those pieces that we mocked up the last episode. And we're gonna start welding on a piece from the old gas tank into the new gas tank. So we're gonna start working on this here guy, welding in the bottom part of the previous gas tank, which allows us to do the fuel sender from the old gas tank, which allows us again to retain the little fuel sender, fuel gauge stuff on the actual speedometer, which is, which is fancy and cool. And so we wanna retain that. So today, that's what we're up to. Ow, 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 ow. All right, we've got some 20 gauge steel sheet here, and now it's time to make this paper gas tank into a steel gas tank. And I always like to start with the hard part first, which I imagine in this at this point in time to be the fuel tank. So let's take this guy off of here, and let's start deconstructing this and seeing if we can bend these corners and figure out how we're gonna do that. All right, I'm trying to get this tape off of here. It's been on here for a day or two. All right, now with everything apart, I want to first sort of figure out this angle here. What is my angle I've got? To do that, I've got my angle finder. I think we got about a 30 degree angle. Sounds familiar from when we built the frame. All right, so the hardest piece conceptually for me at the moment is this guy, because it's got this weird angle, that 30 degree angle. My sheet metal roller. All right, so I did a test bend on the roller there with a piece of scrap metal that's the same gauge, 20 gauge here. And so I've got a nice little 90 there. What I want to do on this guy is to try and bend the corner on my sheet metal roller. So this whole thing is just, and it comes over and I'll weld it together sort of in the middle. But in order to get that bend right, I mean like I could in theory like this thing out and then put this on the roller at an angle and then roll it. But if I do that, then when this rolls, it's gonna roll kind of like that and have this gap up here. So that's no good. So I'm thinking if I do it like this, like this and cut this thing out right here and then up here I can roll that thing and it'll roll straight over like that. And then those two sides will come together perfectly nice and flat and boom just the way we want and this 90 actually coincidentally lines up pretty nice with our the angle we want on here Now we got our piece that we are seeking and let's put this guy on here and see how everything lines up on here. All right, so coming over to the roller here, go ahead and try and get this guy in here. Just some stuff out to make room. All right, and now I've got my little marks here sort of lined up with this guy. My thoughts are that I should get this on here and sort of trace this out before I get too far. My thought being there that once I have this bend in here, I might it might be hard to trace that thing out again. So that's my bend. Not sure if it's exactly where I want it. We may have to ironically we may have to re-sketch where this thing is because I think everything moved forward just a little bit. All right, so I think this might actually work out really well doing it this way, you put the bend in and then trace this thing because then I can sort of slide this right up into the bend very nicely, exactly where I want it. So this is much better. I'm gonna go ahead, I think, and cut out another piece here and do the other side. All right, so now we've got the second one here. You can see the heights are not the same, and so I didn't bend these exactly the same because I'm not a machine. All right, now I've got the general shape here. I just need to cut out these lines here. All 
All right, so I'm gonna have some shaping to do still. You can see I'm not quite in the line there on the top, but this gives me an idea. You can kind of look at it. It's looking like something. All right, so now I wanna take this stuff, basically sort of refine the edges on this thing. So off to the belt sander. Starting to come together. I'm liking those corners here a lot better when they're rounded like that. It just looks slightly more professional. I've got my paper top on there and it's giving me the indication that uh, maybe the metal part is a little bit too long here and that's gonna need to be trimmed. Safety brake. So this is just a reminder to everyone because we all know that sparks and welding and cutting into gas tanks, flames, those are all dangerous activities. And so I'm doing, what I'm doing here involves some prep work ahead of time to prepare the tank. So make sure you prep the tank before you sp send sparks into it. All right, so we have survived cutting into the gas tank and we've managed to cut up this piece here, which is nice and flat. I did have to go around and hammer the edges a little bit to flatten everything out because there's there are some some curvatures going on in this thing on the stock form. So I'm gonna weld this in somehow or another onto the bottom of our new tank. And let's just for fun play with this guy because it does have to line up a certain way on the bolts on the bottom of this thing. And I want to be cognizant of that. There's that guy and that aligns this guy a certain way inside the tank. Here it is, man. I kind of want to build the bottom of the tank up because I want to get this thing here sorted to make sure that I've got this oriented the right way inside the tank. So this float is pointed in a direction that will allow it to function. All right, so here is my piece so far. Now I want to stick it onto this guy here. In order to do that, we need to cut a hole out of this guy. So in order to figure out sort of, I know I want this, I'm going to put this in the center, right? Going this way. But this way, I probably want it kicked over to the side a little bit. For me, I'm just giving myself a reference. So I've got about the center point of this guy is right here on this mark. See how this thing, you kind of see where the bolts are on the bottom. And so they're off kilter with like this guy. They're not in alignment with this thing. And so I really want to keep this this guy is a reference so because that's what I want sort of pointing straight out because that's this this whole mechanism here I'm trying to keep that aligned keep it like straight with this tank whatever because I want it going straight forward straight out I don't want it kicking into the side of the tank or something I need to mark sort of a reference I'll me to once I take the fuel sender out to keep this thing lined up appropriately I'm gonna make a mark on this this guy here that's what tells me where that fuel sender points out, it's out. All right, so now we have our two reference points, this thing for the fuel center and this thing for the center of the ring here. All right, so I've literally just got a sharp piece of scrap metal here that's straight. I'm gonna use this thing to scratch a reference that hopefully this will go straight down and I won't have any sort of deflection or distortion as I, if I were to use this marker, then my line would be off to the side a little bit and my hole down here would be wider and I have to take that into consideration more. But this way, hopefully, it won't be quite so, such a distortion. All right, big moment. Oof. There we go. Now, you probably can't see it on camera, but there is a slight scratch mark in there that I can see. All right, so now we've got our piece here, and if we stick it over our other piece, we are close. There's a bit of refinement to do yet with a file, but I think we're very close there. Let's bust out the file. All right, so I'm going ahead and getting prepped for welding here. I've got everything cleaned up. I even cleaned it off a little bit with some mineral spirits. And now I am, on this one, I'm not gonna try and join them up 
precisely. I'm going to sort of lap weld them to a degree here. And that's just because I don't have more material. I'll be less likely to burn through. And then before I jump into this, I'm trying to make my big mistakes, at least on a piece of scrap metal. So I've been practicing here. And basically my technique that I'm going to do is I'm going to tack weld here every few inches. And then I'm going to go in and fill in the gaps. I'm just going to do a little burst, 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 burst of weld. And that will put more weld, allow it to cool, move slightly, put more weld, move slightly, put more weld. So I'm kind of stacking a dime. Really, it just can't take much heat on this thin metal. So, all right, so here it is. Here's the setup. I got everything clamped in place here. And we've got just a slight overlap, lap joint thing going on here. And by the time everything's welded, you might not even be able to tell that it was a lap joint. All right, and we've already had a blowout right here. So, so far, so good. I'll have to fill that in. And then uh, for the rest of it, it's not looking too bad. We're gonna continue to tack our way around and just continue to fill in the space between these tacks until we have a series of tacks through there. And then we'll try and go through and weld everything. So what I'm doing is I'm moving around. You can see I did one there, one there, one there, one there, one there. I'm spreading the heat around here. And I'm also using a backing plate. This big chunk of metal here, it's like a heat sink. So hopefully the more, that will absorb a lot of the heat and prevent this thin metal from warping, which I've already got a little bit of warping going on, which I'm not super excited about. All right, so now we're largely welded in here. I've still got a lot of refinement to do and there's probably gonna be leaks on this stuff. It's just, I forget how difficult it is to weld or for me to weld sheet metal, thin sheet metal. I've got this one section over here that I've got to, I'm gonna, this is just, there's too big of a gap here and the metal is a little bit thinner in sections here. And so I'm gonna break out the TIG welder for this so I can actually lay the filler material down in that gap and then weld it. All right, so the struggles continue, and ultimately this is what we're left with. I actually started breaking out the brazing rod here because I'm trying to, I need lower temperatures. I definitely need lower temperatures because if you look at this thing, look at how, <laughs> look at how wobbly and distorted that is. So I'm gonna have to break out the hammer and whatnot and try and flatten this thing out. So it's a bit of a mess. We got some really blobby looking wells over here. Some of this other stuff is nice and neat when I got, when I had the nice lap joints that I had all the enough surface area to absorb the heat and everything. But over here where I had the edges were just butt welded together, like this thing just burned right through. This ends up, I've got just globs of weld over here and too much heat. Look at this, there's a big bend right here. I'm definitely gonna be using the brazing rod for the rest of the tank because this one I was able to like clamp some stuff down underneath it, help to minimize the warping a little bit. The rest of it, I'm just gonna be welding the edges on edges and stuff, and I'm not gonna have that, the luxury of having of being able to clamp things together. I need very low heat, and if you look at the what the experts are using, where this is welded at the factory, you can see where I've wire brushed some of that stuff off, there's brazing underneath there. So they braze this little piece here onto the, onto the stock fuel tank. So we're gonna do some brazing for the rest of it. So I've been practicing my brazing here on some butt welds, and I'm fairly happy with that. I got a little technique going and uh, it seems to be working fairly well. So we're definitely gonna be doing brazing on the rest of it and my warping here seems to be pretty minimal. Look forward to that in the next episode as we try and join some of this stuff together. We'll be doing brazing. So thanks for watching this episode. We'll see you next time. Keep on wrenching on your own projects and hopefully this is some helpful stuff for you.